from the complainants. We have heard from the respondent. We've heard from a number of testifiers. Um, we've had uh, the ability to th an extended period to think about what we've heard and what we've seen. Um, I guess as a general statement, uh, there are some concerning portions of the counts that have been laid forth. However, in, in the case we'll start, I think we'll start with count two. Um, seems to me that count two, uh, there is no discernible, uh, tangible connectivity between Senator Fateh and the, uh, and the votes. Um, we don't have any, I cannot find any testimony that can um, make that case. Uh, so in the case of count two, the chair will move to dismiss count two entirely. Uh, uh, count two is of the second complaint I'm referring to as count two, and that is the uh, vote issue. Is there any discussion? Senator Kifmeyer. Mr. Chair, I, I would say I understand what you are saying, though as I became aware that Senator Fateh was previously employed by the Federal Elections Commission, and I kind of think that sometimes when he talked about these areas, it was as if he was very new to these things, didn't know much about them. But if you worked for the FEC Federal Elections Commission, you did. You knew stuff, and I feel there's a greater degree of responsibility and culpability because of that. And I think it's important for us to realize that uh, the more knowledge you have, the, the greater that is. So I was, uh, I understand what you're talking about in regards to the, the motion, uh, but I do think, um, I wanna be sure we all understand, this isn't like someone who didn't know anything about these areas, because federal law is actually more complex than state law, and once you've known that, there is a, a knowledge of and greater degree of responsibility for that. But I understand in the count too, and I will support that motion. Any further discussion to that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion does prevail. With regards to count one or charge one, the first complaint, uh, this deals with um, the Somali TV uh, issue, uh, the campaign finance violation that has been found uh, and has been corrected. Um, I, pers I would like to discuss this first. I'll, I'll put forth a motion eventually, but uh, I am uh, not inclined to support the quid pro quo section of that complaint. Uh, I don't see tangible evidence that says that the half million dollars that was put into a bonding request necessarily was as a direct action or a direct result of any, uh, any other activity. Uh, I certainly have put forth bills for uh, nonprofit organizations uh, or not for profit organizations and um, I don't see where there's necessarily a renew, uh, there wasn't a remuneration or any kind of connectivity. Um, it may not necessarily look good, but in light of the fact that we have now clarified that this was a campaign, there was a purchase of services, and now that has been a comp or that has been recognized by the campaign finance board, it tends to uh, not support that portion of the complaint. Is there any discussion to that section of the quid pro quo section of the complaint? Okay. Regarding the, the rest of the complaint and the campaign finance violation that was uh, established by the complainants, uh, I do find that to be a very serious matter. Um, we have also, during the time of this committee, uncovered another possible campaign finance violation, which I think is even more uh, disturbing, which is a campaign headquarters that was provided by a corporate entity. Um, but that is not our jurisdiction. It is a continuing pattern, which is why I bring it up, of violations of campaign finance. But 
it is, in my opinion, it is not necessarily an actionable, uh, actionable count. But it does make you wonder, as Senator Kiffmeyer said, a person who is involved in the Federal Elections Commission, how they can believe that they can take a uh, campaign headquarters space from a corporation and not have that become a problem. That is troubling. However, the Campaign Finance Board, which will receive a complaint from me regarding that uh, so that they may, we can, they can investigate that. That is their purview. But on the the remaining portions of this count, uh, it has been dis, it has been um, through a lot of thought that uh, the count one portion outside of the quid pro quo would be sustained, and the recommendation to the Rules Committee, which is what we are doing, and we are reporting to the Rules Committee, that we would report to the Rules Committee that the uh, that Senator Fateh sh must uh, attend training sessions with the Campaign Finance Board to be better prepared and understanding of campaign finance laws. Uh, there is no further action or no further uh, a punishment that it would be enlisted by this committee. So to clarify that, the chair moves that the portion of the complaint regarding quid pro quo and the half a million dollars uh, bonding request is not sustained, but the remaining portion of the count, which is the campaign finance violation, is sustained. And this is reported to the Rules Committee with a recommendation that Senator Fateh uh, pursue training with the Campaign Finance, uh, campaign finance Board and that this the findings of fact will be drafted by counsel and this entire motion will be put forth before all members of the committee before it goes to the Rules Committee. Questions regarding that motion? Senator Kiffmeyer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. If maybe, were you going to? Okay. Um, one of the things I think in addition to this, um, uh, in regards to this, I just wanted to say, because I had followed up some questions uh, with Mr. Salah in regards to the notary that I just wanted to um, put on the record that uh, this particular notary, Josiah Lindstrom, uh, happened to also be with the firm, the law firm of Senator Fateh, um, attorney. So it wasn't that law firm, and there's nothing wrong with that when you have a, um, a witness uh, that you're bringing forward uh, for any reason whatsoever, then that law firm working with Mr. Salah uh, to make those things. But I will say, though, that there is still a shadow, and hopefully this training will help clarify it, and also for Mr. Salah in regards to um, uh, providing the video file for, me, for, for Mr. Salah to broadcast versus... Uh, additional expenses with production and editing and doing other things. That's a very, very, um, uh, it's a corporate contribution uh, if it was not paid for and that the production, uh, uh, the posting of the video and paying for the airtime is different than paying for the production of the video, the editing and other things that are normally in a situation would also be an additional expense. And I cannot see a record either here, according to Mr. Fate, Senator Fate, uh, he is saying that um, that was done by Somali TV. Mr. Salah is saying it just provided the video for in the broadcast, but then in testimony even today, that there were other things that were done. But I found it very difficult sometimes to sort it out and understand it with a translator and other things, and I would hope that maybe uh, Campaign Finance Board might want to consider that um, as well. But in regards to your motion here, um, Mr. Chair, I would support that motion. Senator Champion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. One of the things I just want to clarify uh, as I was thinking it through and having some discussion is about the affidavit. One of the things that is important for us to remember as a committee um, is that this affidavit that we are privileged to see, you know, came from Senator Fate's uh, packet of information that was supplied to us. 
Uh, and from, from my understanding, uh, it sought to clarify an issue for this committee that we all will appreciate. So I think what we want to you know, make sure um, that we're careful of is that it doesn't appear like there, there's something else sort of uh, percolating there as if there's this notion of dishonesty. Clarity is always important and good for the soul, right? And so I have no problem with that. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we don't, you know, go down this further road of even suggesting that there's something else going on that was not going on. So, so, so I just wanted to make sure that I put on the record that it, that it was disclosed, uh, that it, it, it sought to clarify an issue. We had the benefit of, of uh, having Mr. Salah come in and also talk about, you know, how he stands by it, uh, whether we agree with it or disagree, but nothing sinister. So I just think that's important for us to remember. Thank you. Any, further, any further discussion? Once again, members, uh, we will have this wordsmithed and put in front of the committee uh, so that you can look at the findings of fact. Uh, we're just trying to expedite this so we can not meet again, although if you'd like to, we certainly can. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we will have that this written up as a final document and a report to the Rules Committee and have, all, have members sign off on it uh, when it is ready. I know that there is some vacation time coming up, so you may not see this, members, until perhaps middle August or probably maybe even a little bit later in August. Um, but we will have on the record that we did sustain a portion of count one. I think that's the only comment that I have uh, is that there is there is a sustained uh, motion on that part of the, of the count. So, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion does prevail. Seeing no further business in front of this committee, this committee is adjourned. <laughs>